Good morning, Gold House. I hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, we continue our poetry unit. I am reading Diamond Willow. Um, and today we continue part three. Um, for those of you who have been following along, we know that um, Willow's dog Roxy was in an accident caused by Willow. Um, her dad is very angry at her. Um, and now she has convinced her best friend Kaylee to go with her to take Roxy to her grandparents. And we know that she has to take the dog sled to get there. Um, and she's doing this because um, Willow's parents feel that they need to put Roxy down. They need to euthanize her. Um, and so um, she wants to save Roxy. So I'm going to continue on. Um, I will also share with you the hard copy of the next 10 pages um, that I'm about to read. Um, remember that as we're reading, we're looking for patterns um, that Helen Frost is using. Remember, she uses the bold-faced words to do um, a deeper meaning of the page. Um, so be watching for that. I'm reading the page, or you can see right there, um, Emma, Kaylee's great-grandmother, um, the chickadee. Oh, for heaven's sakes, what are those girls up to now? I see that spruce hen waiting over there, ready to fly along with Willow. I suppose I'll do the same for Kaylee. Sometimes she puts seeds on her mittens and holds it out for me, out to me. Chickadee dee dee, she says. I believe it's her way of t trying to talk to me. I like that. I hop right up on her hand and take the seeds, then fly off to a nearby tree to eat them. Kaylee keeps an eye on me. I keep an eye on her. I don't like the looks of this one bit. That dog should be inside where it's warm and dry. The girls should be in school where they belong. Don't they see that stormy sky? Do their parents know what they're up to? It looks like they have Roxy well wrapped in a dog bag and a warm blanket. Cora, Lucky, Magoo, and Magoo seem eager to start out. Willow does know how to handle dogs. I'll say that for her. If only she weren't quite so headstrong. She gets these crazy ideas and pulls Kaylee along like this. I never know quite what will happen. I'm not sure about this weather. It's that kind where there's, where first there's a pocket of sharp cold and then a little farther on the air gets warm. The snow comes down and stops and starts again. I won't quite say so, but I'm kind of nervous. Roxy is hurt, I can't turn back. We have to keep moving in case anyone comes and tries to stop us. When mom gets home, she'll call dad, who will figure out what I'm doing. He'll start after me on his snow machine. Now it looks like Kaylee's scared. She keeps glancing over her shoulder at the sky behind us. When we stop to rest the dogs, she takes out some seeds and holds them in her mitten. A chickadee comes right down and grabs one, then flies on ahead of us. Kaylee watches it. Come on, she says. We should hurry, Willow. What if the snow gets worse? So your grandpa can't bring me back. We're more than halfway there. So I'm not too worried, but she's right about the weather. It's snowing harder than it was just a few minutes ago. A little snow won't hurt anyone, will it? Where is the fork in the trail? Shouldn't we have come to it by now? Snow is coming down so fast and hard I can barely see. And why is Roxy whining? Her eyes are bandaged. She couldn't know if we missed the fork back there, could she? I'm not going to turn back. I'm pretty sure if we keep going for about 10 more minutes on this trail, we'll come to the fork. If not, we'll have to go back to see if we can find it. Mom and Dad are definitely home by now. It's starting to get dark, and Cora doesn't know the way like Roxy did, like I was so sure I did. I'm not sure about this. We've been back and forth on this same stretch of trail three times now. I still can't find the fork. Blinding snow swirls ahead of us, behind us, and it's getting colder and darker by the minute. 
Now Kaylee thinks we should try to go back home. She doesn't know I'm not sure where we are. I don't know which way to go from here to get home. I taste panic rising in my throat. I swallow it. And then a spruce hen bursts out right in front of my face. Do I know you? Try not to panic. The spruce hen flies to a low branch and comes to a stop at the point where the branch slopes down. You are starting to shiver, Kaylee says. You might be getting hypothermia. We need to warm up. Be sensible, Willow. Who made her the mother? But it's true. All right, I agree. We might as well make a fire here and wait for the snow to stop. Kaylee looks around, then stares at me. We both know this kind of snow could fall all night. We start to search for dry firewood, and beneath the spruce trees, low snow-covered branches, we find a shelter. Kaylee, look, I say, we can cut spruce boughs for the floor and lean the sled on its side to shield us from the wind. Help me get Roxy in here. Be careful not to knock the snow off that branch. I think the three of us can fit in here. Stop where you are. You might be all right. At least we brought the survival kit and extra salmon to give grandma and grandpa for Roxy. We got a fire going. We melted snow. We boiled water and checked Roxy's eyes. We changed her bandage. We kept her warm. We cooked a pot of salmon stew, gave plenty to the dogs. Now we can eat some, some stew ourselves. Let's not think of this as we're eating dog food. We agree. We're all in this together. We're sharing food with our with four good dogs. We try not to think about the people who are worrying about us. We aren't sure if it's safe for us to go to sleep. If it gets colder, we could freeze to death out here. One thing we know for sure, if we can live out if we can stay alive until tomorrow, when we do get home, we can look forward to being in the worst trouble either of us has ever been in. We can think we're good people. Here's what I see when I light my candle. Kaylee in her green, dark, dark green sleeping bag, her back against the sled. Me in my sleeping bag curled up around Roxy in her dog bag spruce boughs under us, a red blanket over us. Nearby, in a snow cave we hollowed out, we hear Lucky breathing. Magoo whimpers in his sleep and Cora snores a little. The spruce tree seems like it's as wide awake as I am, spreading her branches to make this cold, cozy shelter. If I can't stay awake all night, I'll wake up Kaylee and she'll stay awake while I sleep. I won't disturb her just because I'm scared. I'm the one who dragged her into this. As long as everyone is breathing, I'm pretty sure we'll be okay. It's still snowing, just as hard as it was before. It's cold and I'm scared. There's a lot of personification in here. Jean, Willow's great, great, great grandmother, the spruce hen. I'm roosting under the other side of this tree, awake with Willow, though she doesn't see me. Do I hear something? Yes, it's the sound of someone tearing through the forest on one of those noisy things they ride on. I'll fly out and see what I can see. The snow has finally let up a little, but the wind keeps blowing it around. The dog sled tracks are completely covered. There's the noisy thing, moving faster than I've ever seen one move at night. Ah, yes. It's Willow's father driving it. His headlight, his headlight shines ahead on the trail that Willow couldn't find. If her ears are sharp and if she can remember the direction of the sound, it could help her find the right trail tomorrow morning. Now her father has arrived at, the, at her grandparents' house. They've kept a light on for him. No one is asleep tonight. I watch them through the window as they sit and talk. Her father drinks three cups of coffee, then heads out into the night again more slowly this time. As the fork, at the fork, he stops and looks around, examining both trails for tracks, but there's nothing he can see. Willow never got that far. She took a wrong turn before the fork and got lost on an old trail no one ever uses anymore. Her father slows down when he passes it as if he's thinking. It would be a hard trail to travel in the dark. Do I hear? 
Yes, the dogs are howling. Good job, Willow. If her father stops, he'll hear them. But if there, but is there any way to stop him? I swoop in close as he looks up. What was that? He says out loud, too small to be an owl. I try again. He slows down a little, but he doesn't stop. He shakes his head and goes on home. I hear a snow machine. I shake Kaylee. Wake up. Come on. We have to make noise. She half opens her eyes, pushes Roxy and says, I wish I wouldn't sit so close. I wish you wouldn't sit so close to me, Richard. I could tease her about it, but I don't. I saw the spruce hen fly off in that direction about an hour ago, and I thought I heard a snow machine, but I wasn't sure. It went past and everything was quiet. Now there it is again. Our parents must be out looking for us, Kaylee. She says, I don't know. Out on a snow machine in the middle of the night? That's crazy. That's not even the direction of the trail we came on, is it? She's wide awake now. Let's wake the dogs, I say. Get them howling loud enough so whoever is out there will hear us. We start howling and the dogs raise their voices too. The snow machine doesn't stop. stop. It's moving farther away. We stop howling and silence closes in. It's darker than before. I can't seem to get warm. I wish I could fly. Willow, you sleep now, Kaylee says. I'll stay awake. We're not freezing. I trust her to wake me up if, if what? That's what I don't know. I lie down and with Roxy and doze off. Then deep in her throat, Roxy growls and I'm wide awake. Her ears perk up. Is Roxy scared? Should we be? Kaylee says, want to make another fire? We could freeze to death out here. We make a small fire, but we don't want to go out in the dark to get more firewood. What did Roxy hear? Down deep, I'm scared to death. Out here in the middle of the long cold night under the snow covered spruce tree, Kaylee and Roxy and I lay awake, keeping each other warm like a steady heartbeat. Kaylee speaks a few words to me and I answer. The night is a heartbeat of its own and somehow we're inside it. Kaylee says, when I held Roxy in the sled, it seemed like she was watching where we were going, even though she's blind. I know just what Kaylee means. Willow, she whispers, I'm scared, are you? I don't try to deny it, maybe a little, but look, it's almost morning. Roxy sniffs up the first hint of light and stretches. Heart to heart were held. It's morning and Roxy's eyes are no more, no worse than they were last night. I think I know where we went wrong, I say. If I'm right, it won't be hard to find our way back to the trail and take it to my grandparents' house. Kaylee says, no way, Willow, we're going home. Not me, I'm not giving up but I don't argue yet. We feed the dogs, pack the sled, hitch up Cora, Lucky, and Magoo, and start down the trail, heading in the direction of the snow machine we heard. It's so much easier to find our way this morning. But what are these big tracks? Look, we have a lynx around here. We study the tracks, trying to figure out which way it went. Kaylee says, let's get going. Save all this talk for later. So we set off together, but I look at Roxy thinking, she warned us, maybe scared off a lynx that came too close. We thought we were taking care of her and all the time she was taking care of us. Hike, Cora, hike, Magoo. All right, Lucky. It's time to be on our way to grandma's house. We have to go about a mile on the wrong trail before we come to the right one. I see what happened. Cora hasn't been to grandma and grandpa's house as often as Roxy has. She made a wrong turn down the old trail. The snow was falling so hard by then, we couldn't see past the dogs. That's why we didn't notice. We were headed in the wrong direction. Everything is so clear this morning. Hey, is that what I think it is? Kaylee, look. I think the lynx was here not long ago. All around the intersection of the old trail and the new one, we see tracks of a large lynx fresh this morning. We both sink in up to our knees, but the lynx walked on top of the snow no more than an hour ago, I bet. The fork we have, we should have come to yesterday can't be much farther now. 
This time I know I'll see it. What was the lynx um, up to? I can't believe this. Kaylee is stressing out about missing a half a day of school. She wants to go home instead of keeping on and trying to get Roxy to grandma and grandpa's. We're almost there. I'm afraid one of our dads is coming, not far behind us. I know we're giving everyone a scare. Maybe they've been up all night, but we still have to keep going. Listen, I hear dogs on the trail behind us. At least it's not a snow machine. If it's dad, he'll have Prince and Samson. They aren't as fast as these three dogs, but his sled will be lighter than ours. He could catch up. Hi, Cora. Good job, Lucky. Roxy barks twice, like she's cheering us on. Magoo barks too, and then even Kaylee yells, go. I'm not giving up. Look, where? What is it? An animal, a streak of gold. Roxy growls deep in her throat, like she did in the middle of the night. We slow down and stare into the forest. The lynx stares back at us. When we move on and speed up, so does it. It's sleek, graceful, moving beside us and keeping up. I know we're strong enough to outrun it if we want to, but I don't think I want to. It's sleek and strong. Albert, Richard's grandfather, the lynx. There's no doubt about it. Richard is smitten with this Kaylee. I remember being 13 and in love. The girl's name was Selena. Her hair was black. Her laugh reminded me of Northern Lights. I'd try anything to make Selena laugh. She paid me no attention, or paid me no more mind than Kaylee pays to Richard, but I couldn't help myself. I wanted to protect her, whether or not she wanted my protection, or so I told myself. Truth was, I just wanted to be near her. Yesterday, when word went out that the girls were went were missing in the blizzard, Richard strapped on his snowshoes and headed down the trail. He would have loved to find those girls, especially Kaylee, and help them to get to safety. But the storm grew worse and he turned back. The boy does have some sense. I went out to see what I could see. That dog they call Cora, I knew her as Mary. As I recall, she was Willow's grandpa's auntie can remember when the old trail was the only trail. It didn't surprise me to see her lead them that way, but I was afraid if it would mean trouble. I decided to follow and stay with them. Roxy doesn't miss much. She heard me in the night and growled, so I moved on. The snow had stopped by then. I left a few, few tracks for them to find this morning and a few more by the trail where they took the wrong turn yesterday. This morning before the crack of dawn, Richard hitched up his four dogs and came out looking for the girls. If he'd left home a little earlier, he would have seen my tracks before they did. He might have met them as they came back down the trail. But Willow and Kaylee passed that place before he got there. He's on the trail behind them now. His sled is almost empty, so he's moving faster than they are. He may yet be of some use. As for me, I'm teasing them a little. Willow doesn't mind if I run alongside of them. And if Kaylee is a little scared, well, that will give Richard something to protect her from. That's the end of part three. Today you have um, a lesson from vocabulary that you can work on for the rest of the week and into next week. I will also attach today's normal um, lesson with your journal entry and reading log and also a question about today's part three. I hope you have a great day.